shall discuss DNA structure, DNA replication and protein synthesis. First we shall discuss DNA structure. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed the double helical structure of DNA. So this is how the structure of the DNA looks like. The DNA is composed of two polynucleotide chains which are running anti parallel that is they are running in the opposite direction. See you, here you can see one strand is running in this direction and the other one is running in this direction. So, this is what we mean by anti parallel. So, if, uh, if you take two threads and coil it in the right handed fashion that is how it will look. So, the DNA looks very much similar to that. So, now we shall understand what are the various components of DNA and how they are arranged. The DNA molecule is composed of three important components. The first one is the nitrogen space, second one is the pento sugar and third one is the phosphate group. So what is a nitrogen space? A nitrogen space is a simple nitrogen molecule. There are four kinds of nitrogen bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. We must always remember that adenine always base pairs with thymine with two hydrogen bonds and guanine always base pairs with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. Okay. So, the first important component of DNA is the nitrogenous base which is a simple nitrogen molecule. So, there are four different kinds of nitrogenous bases adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Adenine always base pairs with thymine and guanine always base pairs with cytosine. In addition to the nitrogen base, we have two more important components that is the pento sugar and the phosphate group. It is the pento sugar and the phosphate group which forms the backbone of the DNA. Okay. So now I will show you a diagram how the nitrogen base pento sugar and phosphate are arranged in the DNA molecule. See this is a very simple diagram. Here you can see adenine is pairing with thymine and guanine is pairing with cytosine. Okay. So, this nitrogenous bases are connected to pento sugar. Here the one marked in S, right? These are the pento sugars. Okay. The pento sugars are connected to phosphate molecules. So, this is how the polynucleotide structure of the DNA looks like. You can find the nitrogenous bases which are arranged inwards and it is the sugar and the phosphate groups which form the backbone of the DNA. So, these are the backbones and they are uh, holding the nitrogenous bases inside. Okay. So, I will show you a diagram of this further. See here I already showed this diagram. So, there are uh, two nucleotide strands which are running in the opposite direction. So, the DNA is coiled in a right handed fashion like this. Okay. So, adenine is pairing with thymine. See here you can see adenine is pairing with thymine. Guanine here guanine and cytosine. Here also you can see this is cytosine, this is guanine. So, always adenine base pairs with thymine and cytosine base pairs with guanine. Okay. So, this is how it will look in the DNA. Okay. And within each turn, they will not be more than 10 base pairs. So, keep this also in mind that is at each turn. Okay. We have uh, further if we explain much in their depth we can call this as major groove, minor groove and all. But simply understand that which within each turn there will not be more than 10 base pairs over here. See here this is the diagram which I had already drawn. So, here you can find adenine is base pairing with thymine and here cytosine is base pairing with guanine. And then they are further connected to the sugars. The one marked here as this is sugar, these are all sugar molecules and then they are held together by the phosphate molecules over here. Can you see this? Okay. So, the DNA is composed of three important components. First one is the nitrogenous bases, second one is the pento sugar and third one is the 
phosphate group. So, this is how uh, Watson and Crick proposed the double helical structure of DNA. Next, we shall discuss DNA replication and then protein synthesis. DNA replication. DNA replication is the process by which a DNA molecule is copied to produce two identical DNA molecules. It is just like making a photocopy. Okay. See the DNA. Suppose this is the parent DNA strand. So, the first step which happens in DNA replication is unwinding of the double stranded DNA molecule. Here the double stranded DNA molecule on one end starts uncoiling or unwinding. Here you can see how it is uncoiling or unwinding and as in how that process happens newly uh, new nucleotides are added and a new strand of DNA is synthesized. Okay. So, DNA replicates in semi conservative fashion that is from one parent DNA molecule two identical DNA molecules are produced. So, if this is the parent DNA strand the newly synthesized strand here you can find the two newly synthesized DNA will have one parental DNA strand and one newly synthesized strand. Okay. So, the one in yellow color is the parental strand and green color one is the newly synthesized strand. So, one double stranded DNA molecule will produce two identical double stranded DNA molecules. So, this happens with the help of two important enzymes. So, the first step is uncoiling or unwinding and the enzyme responsible for this is the helicase enzyme. So, there is an enzyme called as helicase which will come here and it will uncoil the DNA. So, that is the function of helicase. Next, once the uncoiling happens, simultaneously a new strand will be synthesized. Suppose there is A over here in the parental strand, T will be attached over here. If suppose there is G in the parental strand, C will be attached here. So, like that a newly uh, new strands of DNA will be synthesized and the enzyme responsible for that is polymerase enzyme. Okay. So, the two important enzymes which are responsible for DNA replication are helicase and polymerase. Helicase is the enzyme which is responsible for the unwinding or uncoiling of the parent DNA strand whereas, it is the polymerase enzyme which adds the nucleotides over here and is responsible for the synthesis of a new DNA strand complementary to that of the parental strand. So, what we mean by complementary? If the parent strand has adenine, then the new strand will have uh, opposite to adenine, there will be thymine. Opposite to guanine, cytosine will be added. Okay. See, you can see this picture and you can understand it in a very, in a much better way. See here, this is the parent strand. This blue color one is the parent strand and this green is the newly synthesized strand. So, in this parental strand, if there is G, in the newly synthesized strand, C will be added. If uh, the parent strand has T, the newly synthesized strand, A will be added. So, as we already know, A always base pairs with T and G always base pairs with C. So, in that fashion, a complementary strand will be synthesized, which is complementary to the parental strand. So, that is a function of helicase and polymerase. Also, we need to keep one more important point here in mind that is the polymerase is capable of doing its function in only one direction that is it can add polynucleotides in a single direction only. So, whenever here synthesis happens see this is the blue color one is the parental strand and newly synthesized strand one will be synthesized in this direction can you see this in this direction it is getting synthesized whereas on the other end it is getting synthesized in this direction that is because polymerase functions only in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So, newly synthesized strand one strand will be uh, one strand will be synthesized in this direction that is 5 prime to 3 prime and another one will be synthesized in 3 prime to 5 prime that is in the opposite direction. Okay. This is also a picture of DNA replication. Here you can see very clearly, see this is the uh, DNA molecule, parent DNA molecule. Here this is the helicase enzyme which is responsible for the 
unwinding or the uncoiling of the DNA. So, here the DNA is unwinding. So, here these two strands are becoming separate and here you can see this is the polymerase enzyme this one and this one this, this entire thing is the polymerase enzyme which is synthesizing the new strand. So, here in one side it is moving from this direction and in another one from this direction. Okay. So, the two strands are getting synthesized in the opposite direction and finally, it leads to two double helical DNA molecules. Here it is a single parental double helical DNA structure which is giving rise to two double helical DNA molecules in the end. Next we shall move on to protein synthesis. Protein synthesis, what are proteins? Proteins are made up of amino acids just like how many cells come together to form a tissue, many amino acids come together to form a protein. So, the production of protein by an individual cell is called as protein synthesis. Protein synthesis happens in two stages, first one is transcription and second one is translation. You can see this picture, so this is the DNA, the conversion of DNA to RNA and specifically mRNA. So, the process by which the DNA gets converted to mRNA is called as transcription and this is the first step in protein synthesis. So, transcription is assisted or it is done by an enzyme called as RNA polymerase. So, the first step in protein synthesis is transcription. It is facilitated by an enzyme called as RNA polymerase. So, transcription is the process by which a DNA gets converted to mRNA. Now, we shall move on to the second step in protein synthesis. The second step is called as translation. So, the process by which an mRNA gets converted to protein is called as translation. Specifically, if we have to see, the mRNA gets converted to amino acids which form the protein. So, protein synthesis has two steps. First one is transcription. The process by which the DNA gets converted to mRNA is called as transcription. And the second step that is by which the mRNA gets converted to protein is called as translation. And this entire process is called as protein synthesis. This is how a individual cell synthesizes protein within itself and this process is called as protein synthesis. Thank you.